Hi everyone, thanks for joining. And uh, we uh, we promised we'd be bringing some more videos and get you guys more insight on what's happening. So today we have a, uh, a expert here with us. Uh, her name is Jody, and I'm gonna let her uh, introduce herself and kind of tell her tell us a little bit of, about herself and about about herself and what she does. And uh, we'll get going. To you, Jody. Okay. Hi, my name is Jody Krobach. I'm a mobile mortgage specialist with TD Canada Trust. Um, I've been doing the job for just over seven years now, and I'm here to answer any questions that you have. So, uh, Jody, one other thing um, about yourself: how is it uh, how has it affected you right now working from home um, versus uh, what you were doing before? Because you guys are pretty mobile right now, anyway, right? With with TD. Yes. So we've always been mobile. We've always had the capability to work from home. Um, who chooses to do that is is up to them. I've always been of the mindset that I get out of the house in the morning. I go to the branches. I go meet my clients in person. So working from home's definitely been a bit of a challenge. I think that we're all facing it. I have two young kids, so trying to yeah. work from home and, and make sure that they're entertained and quiet is um, is a challenge every day. But we're all facing the same challenges. So in terms of how the job has changed. Um, I mean, the sheer number of phone calls we've been getting about people asking about interest rates, um, mortgage deferrals, people looking to break their mortgages early to take advantage of the low interest rates right now. It's, it's been a lot of fielding phone calls and emails over the past few weeks. Um, and that's really what's been taking up a lot of my time. Okay. So, so quite a bit of inquiries for you. <laughs> so nothing, nothing slowed down at all. That's for sure. That's right. And I mean, so 40% of the branches in, in Ontario closed um, over a week ago. So um, also fielding a lot of the clients who are not able to get through to a call center because they're so inundated with phone calls right now. Um, and because all the branches are closing, a lot of people are just reaching out to anyone they can find. Um, and I think that we're finding that to be a bit of a challenge as well. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, I'd say, the biggest thing is navigating all that stuff and doing your family things at the same time. Before all this, we could we could kind of leave things here, go and be be uh, be at work and kind of focus yeah. on that and nothing else, and then come back home and have family life. Now it's all the two worlds have collided and they're all combined. Yeah. Two, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. Good. But we're making it happen. Awesome. Next. Next question to you, Jacqueline. Um, so you mentioned briefly about the mortgage deferral program, um, and a lot of people are calling to inquire about it. So can you tell us a bit about the mortgage deferral program? Because I feel like there's a lot of misinformation out there, or um, people just don't really understand how it works. Can you tell us a bit about that and how you would apply for it? So up until a couple of days ago, to apply for it, you either had to do it um, through the call center which was um, a big problem for a lot of people because the call centers, I, I think over a million people called in in the first few days and the call center just couldn't keep up. The government made the announcement before the banks had any infrastructure in place to handle the sheer volume that we were going to get. Um, so I think the call centers are slowly starting to keep up. Um, the other way they could do it is by going into the branch, but obviously that poses problems for anyone that's trying to self-isolate and not leave the house. So um, as of a few days ago, they were actually added the capability online so you could log into EasyWeb, go into your mortgage and actually apply for the deferral online and it's done instantaneously. You get an email right away saying that it's either been sent to the right person and then you're going to get an email saying whether it's been approved or not. So they've streamlined that process, which is nice. Um, in terms of who can qualify, from the information that we've been given, anyone should be able to qualify for it if they send in the application. Um, what I've been told um, is that they're, they're looking at it on a case-by-case -case basis. For anyone that has been declined, it's most likely due to the fact that they either had a past consumer proposal, bankruptcy, or write-offs, um, and those individuals are not qualifying or if their mortgage is new. So let's say they purchased recently and their mortgage hasn't, they haven't even had the first payment come out yet, or for anyone that's recently refinanced. Because the interest is being capitalized, if they deferred their payment, their mortgage amount would be higher than the original amount. So they are trying to find workarounds for those individuals because obviously someone that just bought their house didn't know this was happening, now wants to defer their payment because they're not working. So everyone's being looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. If it is declined on the online application, call the call center go in or call the branch and they can send up another request and they will they will look at each of those individuals um specifically can i ask a follow-up question on that one yeah um 
so what if somebody has um, a few properties, maybe a couple, maybe a couple of properties, and maybe they have a cottage or uh, maybe they have some rentals. That obviously throws in a throws in a loop. Does that um, does that make a big difference? Do they pay for? Do they defer one and not the other? No, nope, you can defer a, every single one of your mortgages. I have a few. Wow. I've had a few clients that have multiple rentals, and they sent in a request for each of them, and each of them got approved. Oh wow! Okay, and and it doesn't matter. Like you said, it doesn't matter if it's a rental or not. From what so, we've been told, it shouldn't matter. And I mean, if if they have a rental, their their tenants might not be paying rent, which puts them yeah. in a bad situation. So, um, from what I understand, there it just shouldn't matter whether it's a rental, your primary residence, a cottage, second home. Um, they're they're all being approved as long as they fall within the criteria. Very good. And TD has been doing something like this before too. I know I'm with TD, so you know, disclaimer there. Yeah, so um, it wasn't a deferral. We had we have the payment pause and payment vacation. The vacation, yeah. Which you can still take advantage of if you okay, don't want okay. to apply for the deferral. Um, but we've always had those two options available on your mortgage regardless. The Very other good. thing the other thing that I read last night, which I, I didn't know about is that um, you can't request the deferral if you're within your 30 days of your renewal. So if your mortgage is renewing in 20 days, you can't request the deferral. You have to renew your mortgage first and then apply for the deferral. Or if your mortgage is coming up for renewal in three months, you can apply for a three months deferral, renew your mortgage, and then go in and apply for the other three months of the deferral. Related to that, because you had said earlier, um, if your mortgage has recently been renewed, then you can't apply for the deferral. So how does that work if you are coming up on your renewal, you renew, then do you have to wait until at least one payment comes out to apply? How does that work? No. So the renewal is not considered a new mortgage. A new mortgage oh, is okay. only when we put a new purchase in place or a refinance. So renewal, the original principal amount stays. So there is room for that payment to be deferred. Um, so really the only place we're finding issues right now is anyone that's recently refinanced or anyone that's recently purchased. Has uh, TD made any kind of besides what we already spoke about, any kind of major policy changes um, that you know of? So um, there's there's been a few big changes that we've had in the last few weeks. The first one is we're now able to remotely sign with our clients um, the credit application. So we used to have to meet them in person in order to do that signing. Um, they've given us the ability to remotely do this over email now, as long as we authenticate our clients over the phone. Um, the other thing that came out today is we're able to remotely sign the mortgage loan agreement for any solicitor instructed purchases and refinances. So we can do everything over email and over the phone, again, as long as we're able to authenticate our clients um, ahead of time. And and that's my next question. How do you do that without kind of meeting them in person? How do you know who they are? What are you using so, right now to do that? The only way we can authenticate a client is if they are already a client of TD. If they're a new client to TD, oh. there's no way around that. We they'd have to they'd have to either do it through the phone channel or through the branch. As long as they're an existing client, we have things in place. So we already have a mortgage. We have um, we have their employment history. We have um, bank accounts, so we can ask questions that only they would know the answers to. Like, what's a deposit that you've made in the last 30 days? What's your mortgage amount? Or what's the purchase you put on your credit card? And we can authentic we have to ask them a certain number of questions. And as long as they can answer those, then we can val validate their identity. Okay. So uh, TD is not taking on a lot of new business then? For anyone that's new to the bank, it's that we're not allowed to remotely authenticate them. It would have to go that's through the process. Yeah. I see. I see. They don't have like a FaceTime kind of thing, or they Not kind yet. of ID that <laughs> way. Yet. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of cool. Um, I, I, I'd say I, I'd likely say they're probably looking into it because they're not going to be developing very much uh, new business, and that's kind of something the banks need, right? To to keep going. Okay. Um, just in terms, I had just have a side question there. Say if somebody's um, somebody's approved for a mortgage. But uh, now they've been laid off. Yeah. Um, what, what, how to, or, or they're already a client, but they want to apply for a mortgage and they've been laid off, but they kind of know they're going back to their job again. The, how does that work? So that we just received communication about that this week because that's a big question that all of us have. Right. Um, so the communication that was sent to us, I think it was yesterday, um, they said that anyone that had a previously approved application in the system prior to March 25th, so it was either conventional or an insured mortgage, um, they entered into a purchase and sale agreement and they waived all their conditions, 
um, or they had um, a close and they have a closing date prior to September 30th. So those were the three things that we had to hit. As long as we met all of those things, um, regardless of whether the individual is laid off, um, we have to um, honor those existing approvals. So those Very are good. people that have existing approvals in place. For anyone that's coming in and doing a new application, we're going to have to, um, they said that they're trying to come up with something to help these individuals who have been impacted by COVID-19. Um, if they have been laid off from work, then they're trying to come up with something for that right now. As far as currently, we it's business as usual. We have to approve people based on their income. Um, but again, they're trying to come up with something to help individuals who have been financially impacted. Okay. So they're working on it, but right now, just to get put in a nutshell, if you, if you have been laid off, maybe you might have to hold on and uh, hold off on your mortgage. And getting that's approved. right. If, if you want to start something new, if you've already have something at the bank, then, that's approved, yes. you're fine, regardless okay. of whether you're laid off or not. Is there a difference between people who have been temporarily laid off or people who have been laid off? They haven't given us any information about that. Um, if... <laughs> I, I wish I knew. Um, I, I think it's it's going to be a, again a case by case basis. And you know, if if they have a letter from their employer saying that they've been laid off for three weeks, that might be treated differently than someone that's collecting unemployment insurance. Right. Perfect. Oh, I see. Okay. The big thing is obviously we've all been watching the Bank of Canada lower interest rates. Um, I think we went from March twenty fifth down, um, and we were at two point. Seven five, I believe, and now we're at two point four five. Um, what kind of impact has this had on your side of the business? So, after there was three um, concurrent Bank of Canada rate decreases, um, so we saw a, a huge decrease in our um, in our prime rate. So our prime rate was three point six, and it came down to two uh, two point four five. So a big decrease, which has impacted the variable rate significantly. So we've seen that same, the, all the banks have followed suit and the variable rates have all decreased by the same amount that the Bank of Canada decreased the, their prime rate. And are you finding um, an influx of people trying to take advantage of that for, you know, income properties or first time buyers? A lot of people have reached out just to see what it would cost them to break their mortgage, take on a new rate. Um, what it would cost them to renew early. I'm getting a lot of inquiries just from people trying to take advantage of the lower rates right now. Is the prime rate for is, is the prime rate for TD different than the prime rate from say the just the normal prime rate from what's announced? Is is it different or is it the same or do they adjust accordingly? <laughs> So we have two different prime rates. We have our mortgage prime and our line of credit prime. Okay. So line of credit prime is exactly the same as Bank of Canada. It's 2.45. TD's mortgage prime is 2.6. When they, when they made that distinction, they made sure that the discount on our mortgage prime ends up being the same as what the other banks are offering. So if RBC is offering 2.45 on a variable rate, then TD would offer the discount on our mortgage prime to bring it in line with what the other major banks are offering. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, good. Okay. Um, and um, in terms of uh, the difference between fixed and, and variable, so obviously if you have a variable right now, you're, you're automatically going to be adjusted. Um, why is there such a big difference between fixed and variable um, in terms of uh, how, how low variable is and how much higher fixed is? Is that how they projected or how does that work? <laughs> so after the first two Bank of Canada decreases, um, we saw a significant decrease in the variable rate. But surprisingly, we had two major increases in the fixed rates. And I think we were all very surprised by that because we were thinking that it would go the opposite way. And I had quite a few clients reach out and they were surprised when I actually quoted them what the fixed rates were. The only information that I received, because I'm not an economist, I wish I knew more about this, um, but we had our district manager reach out and tell us that the fixed rates were actually going up due to the rapid changes in um, the market and the increased cost for the banks to fund all these mortgages. So I think that they're trying to make up the difference in the fixed rates. Now, that being said, we had two um, decreases in the fixed rates, one on Wednesday of last week and another one again this morning. So this morning was a five basis point drop and last week was another five basis point drop. So uh, let's say last week, a five-year fixed rate was sitting at about 3.01. And right now, as of today, it's sitting at about 2.8. So it has come back down. It wasn't as low as it was a few weeks ago. 
But again, I think that the banks are just trying to make up the difference with how much they're losing on variable rates versus how much they, they're making on the fixed rates. And the variable rates have gone down quite a bit. From what I hear out there, there's some people that have like 1.4% yeah. and then, uh, you know, and then they got some people that, that just signed up for a fix that are, that's like double that. So, well, <laughs> anyone that's in the 1.9 areas, because they, when they signed their variable rate, it was the discount that they got. So some uh, people got discounts of prime minus 1.1. So with the variable being at 2.45 right now, they're winning. Right. Okay. But it's for anyone that's getting a mortgage right now, the discount on the variable rate is minimal. I mean, I think the lowest I can get right now is prime minus 17, which really is only going to bring you to about 2.45. It's, it's not a big discount because the banks are losing so much money. Okay. And I know you're not a fortune teller. You know, that's not part of your job description here. I read it. I went over it and it's not part of it. And uh, what I was going to ask is, do you, do you, do you, would you suggest that it's a better idea to, to lock in uh, or when, to, when would you suggest people lock in, if you can, uh, before things start going back up again? Is there like a sweet spot or is there something, is this something that you, you would say keep an eye out, you know, for a little bit longer? I wish I knew the answer to that question <laughs> because we, none of us have ever seen anything like this before, right? This is, okay. this is something that none of us have ever experienced. The only thing, cause the only thing I can say is that at some point, the bank of Canada is going to have to increase the variable rates again. They can't stay this low for this long. We saw three emergency decreases over the past month, which is not normal. So at some point they're going to go back up. So if someone does go into a variable rate right now, they're going to start to see that rate start to increase again. And if, if they lock into a fix now, then all it would take is the Bank of Canada increase prime twice for those rates to be on par. Um, now, with a variable rate, you can lock into a fix at any time. So if you take a five-year variable rate and you start to see the rate start to go up, you can lock into a fix at any time as long as you take a minimum of a three-year term and there's no penalty. So if, if you want to take advantage of the low rates, you could go into a variable, switch to a fix, or take a fix now and... And if the Bank of Canada increases once or twice, then you'll be exactly where you would have been regardless. Thank you so much for navigating that question. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was pretty much one That's, of the biggest questions that I've been getting from clients because I'm, as the buyer agent, I'm dealing with a lot of first time buyers who are new to the mortgage world. Um, so I think that answered my question in regards to that. And my final question is to wrap this all up. Um, speaking to all those um, first-time buyers, new buyers, um, or people who are just a little confused about everything that's happening right now, is there anything else you wanted to add or you think that they should know or keep in mind for their own mortgages and their own banks? Is there anything that we missed? The only thing I can think of is, especially for the first-time home buyers. Um, with everything that's going on, all the confusion, I would definitely, if you're putting an offer on a property, having some sort of condition in place just to protect yourself. Um, even if they've been pre-approved, I would still have a condition of financing in place because I've even been noticing that bank appraisals have been coming in lower because the banks aren't appraising the properties as high as they were maybe two or three weeks ago because mm -hmm. nobody knows what's going on. The, the market has been impacted by it. So I have an application right now where their CMHC insured and the appraisal came in $25,000 less. And now those clients have to make up the difference because they went in firm. Um, so I would just, I would, I would definitely say have something in place just to protect yourself because of everything that's going on, regardless of whether you're pre-approved, it just gives you that added protection just in case. Um, for anyone that's not a first time home buyer that currently has a mortgage, if you need the deferral, they are in place. Um, if you're looking to refine, if you want to consolidate debt, if you want to do anything to make things a little bit easier, you can always look at financing, adding a home equity line of credit because you can consolidate your debt at a lower interest rate, have one payment. Um, and that's always something that's available there. Again, we have the payment pause, the payment vacation if they don't want to defer their mortgage for six months. Um, so these are all options that are available to anyone at any time. Awesome. Fantastic. And, um, okay. My final question just to tie into that would be, um, obviously, as realtors, it's our job to make sure that we are protecting our clients by putting those financing clauses in. Um, I mean, we anyone that's in the industry right now knows that everything is a little uncertain. 
So what kind of timeline are you seeing right now as far as these um, letters of commitment to take place from the time you get an accepted offer of purchase to an actual commitment letter? What's that timeline look like? It, it's dependent on the day. I'm finding that our credit center is actually, we're getting quick turnaround time right now because there's not many people that are purchasing. There's not many people that are doing mortgage applications right now. So I don't think our, our credit center is not as busy as it was. However, um, they are working from home, which is something that's very new. So they're working remotely. They're short staffed. So there's some days where we're getting very quick turnaround time. There's other days where it's taking a little bit longer just because of the, the complexity of, um, of their new job, of their new um, how they're working. So um, I would still say five days is doable. Um, if an appraisal is required, that might be the piece because appraisers aren't going into properties anymore. So we're trying to find new and creative ways for this to happen. So a lot of times they're asking for photos of the property and they'll just do a walk around of the property. It might take a little bit longer. Um, I'm finding that the appraisers, appraisals are still coming in in a timely fashion, but I don't want to say that that'll continue because anything can change at any point. Awesome. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, we've basically been guided from from our um, managers and the real estate council and so on to allow as much time as possible in these offers to for financing and inspection. Like you said, this is new for all of us. Um, so if if we can get it done in five days, awesome. But you're saying basically as much time as we can give the better and not to put something forward without that condition in there. Awesome guys. Thanks everybody for watching the video. Uh, we're going to obviously try to bring you guys uh, more of this. I want to send a big thank you uh, to Jody Krobach. Thank you from TV Canada. Thank you for, for joining us and answering all these questions. I, I know there's, uh, there's been some difficult ones uh, and I hope we answered a lot of this, uh, uh, the, the, the questions that you guys had. Um, if we miss something, if there is another question that you think we didn't cover, please go ahead and comment um, and, and let us know. Obviously, we can't do a ton about the, the video quality right now. We're doing the best we can with that one. We'll try to improve that as we go. Um, but again, if you have any questions, um, we're going to have the questions and answers posted as well. Uh, so you can read them uh, if you don't want to watch the whole video. I just wanted There's to more. give Jody an opportunity. If anybody is looking for a new um, mortgage specialist, somebody to help them out, how can they get in touch with you, Jody? Uh, you can give me a call on my phone number, or um, you can email me anytime if if you guys want to add that information to your um, to your communication. Absolutely, Perfect. we're gonna have your uh, your info posted on on this uh, on this video as well as uh, as our website. So. If anybody has any questions, Jody's a wealth of information.